we'll take 10 minutes extra in the session, so we'll end around 10 past 4. Uh, uh, Prince Turkey, if we look over the last 10, 15 years, there have been occasionally periods of rapprochement between Iran and GCC or Saudi Arabia, but long periods of tension. Uh, and certainly since uh, 2003, U.S. policy in the region vis-a-vis -vis Iraq and then vis-a-vis -vis Iran and so on changed the balance of power, created new tensions, created new realities on the ground. Uh, and yet now we have the beginnings of a potential uh, a change in that uh, dynamic with uh, the interim agreement between the P5 plus 1 and Iran, which Saudi Arabia officially and tentatively, tentatively welcomed as potentially a positive step. Uh, if indeed this is an opening uh, with a new president in Iran and new conditions, uh, what could the GCC state, Saudi Arabia, how do they see a rapprochement with Iran, how deep would it be, what would it feel like, and given that the realities in the region have changed, whether in Syria or in Iraq and so on, uh, what would, if, you know, this rapprochement proceeded, what, be, what would be the parameters of such a new and, and a much improved relationship? How might that impact Geneva? How might that impact Iraq? How would you envision it if it were to come to be? First of all, let me respond to Mr. Bartes about uh, Saudi Arabia pushing sectarianism in the Syrian conflict. As he rightly said, I disagree with him. <laughs> and uh, Saudi Arabia worked with the Assad regime for many years without any consideration for sect or ethnicity. And uh, to accuse Saudi Arabia of fomenting this, uh, this issue that is happening on the ground, I think is mistaken. And should, Dr. Bates should review his sources of information on that. As he should review his sources on the information about GCC and Saudi fears of a rapprochement between the West and, uh, and Iran. And Saudi Arabia and the GCC countries have welcomed the agreement in Geneva, but we consider it a first step. Our continued call for the Middle East is to be free of weapons of mass destruction. And that comprehensive solution, I think, is still some ways off. So as I said in my presentation, we're not going to, to applaud until we see that happening. And if the P5 plus one were to become the P5 plus 2, including the GCC to the table of negotiations with Iran, that would be a step in the right place to make this issue more of a regional as well as an international one. So far, people are crossing over us mm -hmm. without taking permission for our use of our airspace. And so um, we have to bring them down to reality that it is us who are immediately concerned about this issue. Uh, Iran is a geographic neighbor, as uh, Dr. Musavian mentioned this morning, and it's going to be there forever. And we have had, as you correctly said, ups and downs with Iran. Uh, more recently, and to cut uh, the issue short, when President uh, Rouhani was, was elected, King Abdullah, as I mentioned in my presentation, sent him uh, a telegram of congratulations and expressing the hope for improved relations. Uh, President Rouhani, to give him credit, even during the election, um, was calling for improvement of relations with Saudi Arabia. But what we need today is not more rhetoric. We need action on the ground. We need to see Iran remove revolutionary guards from Syria. Uh, we need to see Iran telling Hezbollah, mind your business, go back to Lebanon, don't interfere in, uh, in, uh, in Syria. We need Iran to say to the Abbas Brigade from Iraq, go back to Iraq, don't cross the border into Syria. These are tangible and doable things for Iran to do in order as Dr. Musavian wanted to say this morning, and did say so, to improve relations with the regional countries. Mm -hmm. The Gulf states, since even the, 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 
the very bloody conflict between uh, Iran and Iraq in the 80s was never uh, inimical on its own initiative towards Iran. It was all mostly responsive to Iranian actions or misactions uh, even during that, uh, that conflict and subsequently have called on Iran to engage and to deal with the issue of the Emirati Islands. They refuse to talk about it, simply ignoring that there is such a thing as international law, as international agreements, as an international court of justice, etc., etc. And I agree with Dr. Musavian this morning that Iran is a big country. It's a country of <laughs> nearly 80 million people with huge economic and, and, and uh, natural resources. As a country of that size and that, that, uh, that uh, potential power, it should be a friendly country and not take on a pugilist stance towards its neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I think, something for the Iranian people to decide. It is not for me. But it is also for the Arab countries in the Middle East and in the Gulf particularly that they have continually extended their hand to Iran in friendship. And in many cases, that hand was not taken up uh, by Iran. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you all for your patience. Now is the time for a Q&A. Uh, Mr. Moussavian, since you've been mentioned. Quick response. <laughs> Since the early revolution, Iran intervened in Arab countries' affairs. Just some months after the revolution, an Arab country invaded Iran. Saudi Arabia GCC supported with over $100 billion for invasion of Iran. Over 1 million Iranians they were killed by Saudi and GCC monies. Saddam uh, attacked Iran by chemical weapons, 100,000 Iranians they were killed and Saudi supported. It was invasion by an Arab country just right after revolution. Okay, after 15 years of disputes, I was the one mandated by President of Sanjani came to Jeddah three, four days with Emir Abdullah. We managed a comprehensive package then Dr. Rouhani came to Jeddah. We signed the security pact. All security assurances, it is in the security pact. But now, everybody can see in Wikileaks that since 2005, Saudi Arabia, GCC, pushed the US and Europe to attack Iran. Military strike against Iran. You cannot deny the Wikileaks. It is fact. All my European friends, they have told me for many years that the pressure from Saudi Arabia to attack Iran is more than Israel. Why you violated the security pact we signed? What we did after 1998? I mean, for 30 years, either the first decade, invasion by Arab country, supported by Saudi Arabia, $600 billion damage to Iran, or after the, the next decades, again pushing the U.S. and Europe to attack Iran, and then you are blaming Iran now. On, on disputes, border disputes with uh, uh, Emirates, this is something related to Shah period. You know this is not uh, created after revolution. But Saudi Arabia has more border dispute with its GCC neighbors, more than Iran with but you didn't mention any border disputes you have with your neighbors. On Egypt, everyone knows Mubarak was a dictator corrupted. And I'm sure you would not deny that you supported Mubarak up to the last minute against the will of Egyptian nation. Whether we want to call it Arab Spring or revolution, the people, they were in Tahrir Square and you were confronting the will of Egyptians, supporting Mubarak. Then they had an election. Morsi was elected, my brother. It was a free election. Then Saudi Arabia supported a military coup against elected president. 
Now the, the, the many, many Ikhwan and Muslims, they are in prison, and you are supporting the military. It was Iran really interfered in Egyptian? Syria, you are right, you had very good relation with Assad. I fully agree with you. Assad made a big mistake for mistreating the demonstrations. It was peaceful demonstration. He made a big mistake for violence. But Bahrain did the same. Overwhelming majority of people in Bahrain, they are Shia. Also, they mistreated the, the, the peaceful demonstration. The people in the streets of Bahrain, they were killed. You are supporting Bahrain. You are blaming Assad. Can I answer or you want no, to go I just, on for another I list? just wanted to say, <laughs> believe it or not, if you are going to go to, to uh, complaints, Iranians, they have more complaints because Iranians, they have never invaded any country. And Arabs, they have invaded Iran. Can I answer you now? Uh, could you hold for a moment? Let me get another f few questions. That'll give you a chance to...